Hi everyone, it's Paul from This Designer. Today we're going to be going over my favourite purchases for the year. This is pretty much a broad category of things that I've bought in 2023 that have just, you know, had an improvement on the way I work or my just general well-being. So I'm just going to walk around the house and just kind of pick out things that, yeah, have made a big difference uh, and I think are worth sharing because I think you might find it helpful as well if you are Similar to me, someone that does you know, DIY, makes designs and tinkers and all that sort of stuff. So first of all is what I'm wearing here. These are the Carhartt of Rugged Flex overalls. I don't think necessarily you need to buy the Carhartt, but I do think you should think about you know getting some workwear. This has been probably one of the biggest improvements to the way I work. Before I would just be wearing my regular clothes and I would just have trousers or shorts on and two pockets. And I'd just be limited to two pockets. I try and put everything in my pockets, my trousers or shorts would end up falling down. So it's just really nice moving over to something like a work belt or some overalls that have multiple pockets to hold things. And also the fact that they hang off the shoulders, which means you can hold more weight on the overalls, which is really nice. Another benefit is that you just won't dirty your clothes as much. It's nice to just have one set of workwear clothes that you can get dirty and you can take them off and not have to worry about the clothes that you wear on a normal day-to-day -day basis. Another benefit to these overalls and many other overalls is that you get you get knee pads. So here I've got padded knee pads. Now I did injure my knee, I think it was this year or last year, and it still hurts me. I basically just banged my knee onto the sharp corner of an edge. I can't remember exactly what I banged it into, um, but it did leave some scar tissue. And just now I've got this little niggle and I can hear a little grating noise whenever I walk upstairs and those type of things. I've been to a physio and she said it's just pretty much scar tissue from just probably that accident. But having padded knees is a really nice addition because you don't realise how many times that you do actually kind of rest your knee against things when it is just working on the floor or getting on top of things. So that is definitely an extra little benefit that comes with getting some sort of workwear that is designed for this type of stuff. I've made a few upgrades to the 3D printers this year. I think I've documented pretty much all of them. But I think by far the best one, best bang for the buck, has probably been the Orbiter 2.0 from LDO Motors. Uh, this I've put on the 3 Mega and yeah, it's really improved the print quality and the speed and the flow rate that I can get from this printer. I've said it a few times in previous videos, kind of, I was on the fence of whether to keep this i3 Meg. I did kind of feel it was starting to get kind of at the end of its life and maybe it needed to be upgraded. But since I've gone to the Mega X mount, this is a direct drive, I've been able to obviously put in the Orbiter 2.0. Yeah, it's really turned this 3D printer around and very, very reliable now, very consistent prints and able to squeeze a little bit more speed out of it, which is always a good thing. Another PPE purchase I recently made, and I should have made this a long time ago because I've had some very close calls with almost breaking my toes, with heavy things just missing my feet. I eventually got round to getting some steel toe cap shoes. These are the Birkenstock QS 700s. What I was specifically looking for was I wanted something with a wide toe box and something with a near enough zero drop heel. So you may or may not have seen kind of like the, the trend in recent years with barefoot shoes. I have been trying to improve my ankle flexibility for quite a few years. And I realized that pretty much all day I am in shoes that have a elevated heel. So I've tried to switch all of my shoes to a zero drop. I do feel like I've got a little bit of ankle flexibility and certainly do feel like I've got a little bit of extra toe flexibility. I think anything with a shoe that is foot shaped, so it doesn't kind of cram your toes in. If you look at kind of like your, your last few toes and your feet, they'll often be like bent in and they really shouldn't be like that. They should be kind of spread out like your hands are when you want to grab onto something. That's your foundation when you are standing and walking. That is kind of the idea. I wanted to find something that kind of ticked those two boxes, zero drop, close to zero drop, or and also a wired toe box. Because when I'm working on projects, you know, I'm usually doing it all day. I want to be in something that I'm not going to be thinking I'm going, you know, two steps backwards with my ankle flexibility and my, my toe shape as well. I've only had these for a few weeks. You can see they're pretty much brand new, but they are very comfortable. It is very nice to find shoes with a wide toe box because I do have pretty wide feet. Yeah, these meet all the safety specifications that I need. And it's just nice to feel protected when you are working with heavy things. I was really stupid. I should have bought these a long long time ago they are quite expensive these are 140 pounds brand new 
I was lucky that I found them on eBay for £90, which is still expensive for a pair of safety shoes, but yeah, they're, they're quality made. They should, they're, they're made of leather and they should hopefully last me a very long time. This year I finally made the switch to official Loctite super glue, specifically in these squeezy bottles. I get through a lot of super glue and I would always buy it from the pound shop. I would use them one or two times and then the thing would just dry out, even though I do keep them in jars with rice in it to try and stop the water being absorbed into the glue. This I have bought probably about, I think this was maybe 10 or 11 months ago, and it still works. And another little thing about this is that this is the, the gel option, and I will always buy gel because whenever I'm trying to super glue something, I don't really need it to be runny. And a lot of the times I would super glue something and it would always kind of like drip out everywhere. I would get it all over my fingers, but this is a little bit more viscous. You can place it exactly where you need it, and it won't run out everywhere. Yeah, I will always be going official. It is more expensive, but honestly, it's worth it because one of these has lasted me much longer than kind of buying a, a 10 set of super glue from like the pound shop or whatever. This year I invested in a Dewalt SDS drill. This is the DCH273. It's an absolute joy to use. Hardly any vibrations get transferred into your hand when you're drilling with this thing. I had to drill some uh, 16 millimeter holes in some concrete for some rebar reinforcement for my shed build and this thing just went for it like butter. Also with this version you can use it in chisel mode so you can use like SDS chisel bits here for instance and this actually come in handy very recently because I had to chisel away bathroom tiles and into the bathroom wall because we had a leak. This actually come really in handy for that because doing it by hand would have been a much longer and harder process. I always recommend going cordless because it is just 10 times easier working in a small place when you don't have to worry about additional wire. This year I upgraded my drill bits. I was just using just general hardware store drill bits in the past. For, for wood they're okay but for metal they get blunt pretty quickly and they just end up drilling very poorly. So far these dormer bits Cost me, I think, £60 for a set of, I think I've got about 38 bits. They're very nice quality. I've had Dormer in the past and they always cut very nice and cleanly and they stay sharp. This year I built myself a little MFT table. This is just from an old desk uh, and I invested in some Bessie quick release clamps. Uh, these ones are special and I think the, f I'm not sure if the Festool ones actually do have this feature, um, but as you clamp it, they uh, apply downward pressure so you don't get lift up. There is one caveat to it and that you do need to make sure that you screw it into the bottom of the table because if you are clamping something, this will lift up slightly. So you do get a little bit of lift up if you don't screw this in. So if you just drop this in and clamp it, nine times out of 10, if you're not clamping it really, really hard, you won't get any lift up. But a few times I've had to, when I need that extra clamping pressure, it would lift up a little bit. And that's when I need to kind of screw it in. This year I ventured into a little bit more metal working and I finally got a welder and done a little bit of welding. One of the things that I bought straight away was a 3M speed glass welding helmet. I was thinking about getting a cheap one from Amazon, which was ranging from about 30 to 50 pounds. Reading the reviews were hit and miss. Sometimes people would say that um, it wouldn't turn on and they would get a welder's flash. So I heard a few horror stories about the, the cheaper stuff. A lot of people just said, you know, PPE, just get something good that's going to last you. I think the speed glass is considered, you know, an industry standard. Uh, this is the 9002D version. I got this secondhand on eBay. There is, there is a lot of secondhand welding equipment, especially PPE stuff that you can get pretty cheap. I think I paid about £120 for this. And luckily I haven't needed to change any of the, the lenses or the uh, the covers or anything like that. They're really not too badly scratched. And using it is, is a very nice experience. The headband fits really nicely. You get a really nice, snug, comfortable fit. You can adjust the tension so you can lift it up and down very easily. Uh, the field of view is very, very good. And the clarity as well is very, very good. I've heard people say, you know, it's night and day difference between going from a like a 50 pound welding helmet compared to something more premium like this so i'm glad i just made the investment i'm going to be hopefully doing lots more welding in the future once i've got the space to do it and i'm pretty sure this will last me a lifetime i bought some other clamps this year that just up here these are the craig auto max uh, these are great because basically they will adjust to various different thicknesses when you are clamping things you don't need to adjust it so here's a quick example imagine you've got like two thin bits of material you can clamp them together and there you go so it's clamped you release it and let's pretend that now you are clamping something a little bit thicker together 
again I've not adjusted anything in this clamp and there you go so so there you go I think you can go even thicker with this as well in terms of clamping so let's pretend you've got something really really thick now uh, let me just squeeze that in there you go so it's, well it's pretty tight yeah I mean that would hold it for gluing and that type of stuff so they're, they're quite expensive I think they're about 25 to 35 pounds per clamp I managed to pick up pretty much all my stuff is always secondhand on eBay and I got six clamps for I think I paid a hundred pounds so a pretty good deal I also got these ones as well let me show you these uh, these are like right angle again they use the auto mac so they can kind of clamp different thicknesses it's like an interesting corner clamp and I've tried a few other alternatives this year and none of them really works that well for single-handed operation these seem like they're probably going to be the best from my experience this year I upgraded to some wearer drill bits I'm pretty sure everyone probably starts off with a kit like this this is like a black and decker kit it cost me I think 15 pounds you get 30 or 40 drill bits and the generic bits are okay but I found that so many times when I'm screwing things in I'm, I'm slipping especially when I'm doing things you know at an angle if I'm doing things upside down for instance I don't have like an extra hand to hold in the screw when I'm screwing things in I was slipping a lot and it was very very annoying now these wearer bits are definitely a step up from just the generic stuff that you get in these really cheap kits I'm slipping a lot less on the heads when I'm screwing and they fit much more tighter in in the screw head uh, posi bits that I've tested so far What's more as well is this is not really an expensive upgrade. I bought a pack of 10 PZ2 drill bits from Wera and it cost me I think £12 for 10. That's probably going to last me 10 or 20 years. And I'm definitely going to be switching all of my drill bits that I use uh, over to Wera or another I guess higher quality brand and not just go with the generic stuff because it does just make it a more pleasant experience and you will definitely slip less when you are uh, screwing screws into things. I purchased a air quality monitor in the last month or so. I was doing a lot more laser engraving as you've probably seen on the channel. I've been reviewing a lot more laser engraving machines which is really cool and I wanted a way to make sure that the air in the room while I'm working there is safe enough and also I did recently test some air purifiers that can be used with laser engravers and I wanted to see if they do actually do uh, a good job. Now this isn't a you know, monitor that's calibrated out of the lab, something like that is probably going to cost you thousands. I would say that you know, this is probably the upper end of a consumer handheld air monitor. I'm not sure how much I can really trust it but it does give me a little bit of comfort knowing that for instance, making sure that I've got the windows open or making sure that I do have my air purifier on when I'm laser engraving, it seems to record you know, that the air is clean and it is doing a good job of cleaning the air. It does also measure VOCs. I'm not sure, again, how accurate that is, but I found myself using it when I'm doing 3D printing and I can test certain filaments and also I've got the, you know, the Nevermore filter in my Voron. Uh, I can test how effective that is. Just having some data to back up you know, whether having my door and my window open is worthwhile. Also downstairs, I'm in, I'm in that small utility room doing woodworking. I've got a Festool dust extractor and that should alarm me when the you know, air suction goes below a certain point and therefore obviously it's not doing a very good job. But it's just nice to have a secondary layer of protection just to tell you that, you know, yes, you should really be wearing a mask. Uh, when I was doing some laser engraving tests, you know, I was amazed at how quickly the room spiked to being incredibly unhealthy air. And sometimes you get a bit lax, sometimes you get a little bit lazy, you don't put a mask on it, you don't open a window, and having something like this to tell you that no, you should really be making sure you're wearing a mask or you know, making sure you've got adequate air ventilation. I think anything that I can use to scare me to make sure that I'm not just doing it nine out of 10 times, I'm doing it 10 out of 10 times, yeah, making sure that my health is maintained while I'm doing this work. Because I want to be doing this for the rest of my life. I've got many, many years ahead of me. Yeah, I, f I don't think you can put a price on health. And I think, you know, PPE and, and stuff and, and safety equipment around this type of work uh, is definitely worth the investment. So I think I'll be keeping hold of this air quality monitor. Another tool purchased this year was the Stanley Block Plane. This is this little thing here next to my record number five jack plane. Now I actually find myself using the block plane more than I do the number five now because honestly it's just smaller and lighter and for a lot of the jobs that I'm doing in this tiny space it's usually just cleaning up an edge or maybe chamfering an edge, maybe clean up a little bit of glue or something like that. Uh, I will definitely be expanding my hand tools for woodworking once I've got a bigger shed built. I really do like doing things by hand if possible, especially in this small space because 
you know, using power tools, for instance, if I use like the, the, the Dewalt router here, uh, it kicks up a lot of dust, it makes a lot of noise. Hand tools are just a little bit more of a uh, pleasant experience when doing it in a small space. I've been making a few boxes and drawers this year, so I picked up uh, a Enjoy Wood. This is the XK4 pocket hole jig. If you follow any woodworking channel, I'm sure you've probably seen something like this reviewed. It really does make the process of making pocket holes 10 times easier. I've been very impressed with this pocket hole jig. Now one negative is that the drill bit that come with this jig, uh, it did snap probably after about 20 uses. So I'm not sure if maybe I was just going a bit too hard pushing it in. I did pick up another one. This is a Craig pocket hole and these are pretty expensive. This was like 18 pounds. From my experience, the, the drill bits and the bits that you get when you buy these type of products, they are generally low quality. Uh, I was hoping it would have lasted a little bit longer. The rest of the jig still works fine. I haven't had any issues with it. And I'd definitely recommend picking up something like this if you are making pocket holes. As part of the welding equipment that I bought this year, I got hold of the Fireball Tool Monster Square. My first welding project, I was trying to weld some right angles without this and with the clamps and the table that I was using, it was just an absolute pain in the ass. So I decided to invest in this square and it made my next project when I was making some speaker brackets so much easier. What's more is that because you get these tabs, um, you have a flat reference service to work from as well. Previously, I was just putting it onto my, my plastic workbench outside um, and yeah, it just resulted in not very good worlds. Uh, and just recently, Fireball Tool have got very good Black Friday deals. They had a fabricator package, which I think was like 60 or 70 pounds uh, discounted. So at the moment, I don't really need more of these squares because I think one is enough. But when I start getting into bigger welding projects, I'm certainly gonna be picking up more of these and I'll definitely be waiting for you know, next year's Black Friday deal because you can get some very good savings. I had to put up quite a few shelves this year, so I invested in a laser level. This is the Hoopar SO4CG. It comes in this nice carry case. Uh, you also get a, a level and a clamp. Uh, you get batteries as well. You get a remote control. I think a lot of the laser levels in this price range, they all offer pretty much the same functionality. So I don't necessarily think you need to go with, with Hoopar. Every single brand out there has their own laser level. It is definitely a step up from trying to do this by hand or using tape measure or spirit levels. It really does make the process of putting holes in walls, um, putting up anything that needs to be level, much, much easier. This is one of those things that I wish I bought many, many years ago. I would consider it a early purchase for any sort of DIY person, definitely. What's more, if you need to do any sort of grading or try, you know, trying to get things level, uh, you can use it outdoors and I have been using it. You need to wait for the light to get a little bit darker in the daytime, but I've been able to easily pick up the laser level at a five meter distance when I've been laying out my uh, concrete pad outside. So it was actually very, very helpful for that as well. As I always need more space in this house, uh, I recently picked up the Bora Centipede legs. These are really cool. They are very compact and as you can see, they expand out into a nice size uh, table leg here. This is the, I believe it's 1200 by 600. They've got many other sizes. These are actually the smallest ones that they do. Uh, I haven't actually made a tabletop for it at the moment. I'm just gonna be using some six mil plywood uh, just that I can fold up and put away. At the moment, I've just been using a, a cardboard sheet and you know, just for doing bits and bobs where I need a little bit more space, these come in very, very handy. Now they look quite thin and flimsy, but according to the specs, they can actually hold, I believe 1,100 kilograms, these, these are legs put together. And I've put a sheet of wood over it and I've lent on it and it does not move at all. So they look very well built and they're very quick and easy to pack up and store away. I added some Nipex Cobras to my collection this year. I did have the 100s and I found them too small uh, and they do not come with this nice red rubber grip and I found that when your hands get a little bit wet or sweaty it was actually very hard to grip onto it and it was just too small for my hands. The 125s I find are a perfect in-between 
for being a everyday carry and just big enough that you can kind of squeeze them in, in the palm of your hand. And as I said, they've got the red rubber grip, which makes them easier to hold on to when your hands are wet. I did originally have the Nipex, the plier wrenches, and they are very good, especially when you're doing plumbing jobs. Uh, but I find myself reaching for the Cobras much more because they can still grip onto uh, nuts, but also because they've got these uh, the, the jagged teeth in them, yeah, you can kind of use them for pretty much any sort of pulling. And the last big upgrade that I made this year was my camera rig that I use for filming these videos. I was previously using a very cheap video fluid head. I've switched to a Miller. This is a CX6 fluid head. I've also got some Miller speed legs as well. These are carbon fiber, so they're a little bit lighter than the Manfrotto that I was using. All of the adjustments to the tripod are done in the middle of the leg, so you don't have to reach all the way down to make adjustments to the height, which is really nice. Also, a big change is that this is now on a ball head. You don't have to worry about the level of the legs. You can just adjust this ball head to get the camera level and previously it was a huge pain in the ass to get my legs level in order to get my video level here another huge huge benefit to going with a true video fluid head is that you have a counterbalance system and basically it means that you can ad adjust this any position you want and it will just stay in position and with my cheap fluid head tripod head i would have to set it and then crank it down to get it into position and then it would move a little bit and especially when you're doing like macro shots or something like that it was just a huge pain in the ass and also that i found that once i started to add more weight to the head of it it could just no way accommodate that way and it just made it even harder to adjust the position of it it's got fluid drag it's also got tilt as you add more weight to it you can adjust the counterbalance as well i think it can, can support up to i think like 15 kilograms or something like that um, so I've been able to sort out my rig now. I've got a, a monitor at the top here. And also I've got a small rig. This is a 99 battery. You can see I've still got the cover on it. I only just recently got it. But it means that I can power pretty much everything from that. And then also because uh, I'm switching to cinema lenses, uh, I do like to use some manual focus primes as well, some vintage lenses that I've got. Uh, I upgraded to a, I well, didn't upgrade, I just bought this. This is the, I think it's the Tilter Nucleus Nano 2. Basically, it means that I can, via remote control, control the focus of the lens, which is a huge benefit for manual focus lenses, because previously I would have to stand in position and then I would have to set up something as a reference point and then I would go back into the camera, adjust the focus, but now I can just stand in position, I can get myself set up in the frame and I can just, via remote control, I can just control the focus. So you can see as I move this, you can see it's just moving the focus so it's a huge huge time saver and it just makes working with manual lenses so much easier if you are just doing this as a one person show so those are my favorite purchases from 2023 none of these products are sponsored i've bought every single product mentioned in this video with my own money so i hope you found it useful please do share your favorite purchases from 2023 in the comments below that's it for today i'll catch you later